Giordano Bruno, the philosopher burned alive for defying the Inquisition. He called himself the Nolan because he grew up in Nola, a town near Naples. But no city or country could have confined one of the most untamed spirits of 16th century Europe. At the age of 15, Giordano Bruno left for Naples, where he attempted to channel his exalted religiosity by entering a Dominican monastery, but soon began to cause a stir due to his undisciplined nature and defiance of authority. For instance, he removed icons of virgins and saints from his room, leaving only a crucifix on the wall, and on another occasion told a novice not to read a poem about the Virgin. Such gestures could be considered suspect of Protestantism, at a time when the Church in Italy harshly persecuted all followers of Luther and Calvin. Therefore, Bruno was denounced to the Inquisition. However, the accusation had no consequences, and Bruno was able to continue his studies. At the age of 24, he was ordained a priest, and at 28, he obtained his license as a theology lecturer at his monastery in Naples. Bruno seemed destined for a quiet career as a monk and theology professor, but his insatiable curiosity stood in the way. He managed to read the books of the Dutch humanist Erasmus, banned by the church, which showed him that not all heretics were ignorant. He was also interested in the emerging scientific literature of his time, from alchemists to the new astronomy of Copernicus. The Infinite Universe of Giordano Bruno Thus, in Bruno's mind germinated extremely bold ideas that challenged the church's official philosophical and theological doctrine. Like Copernicus, Bruno rejected the idea that the earth was the center of the cosmos, not only that, but he went so far as to argue that we live in an infinite universe, full of worlds where beings like us might worship their own god. Bruno also had a materialistic conception of reality, according to which all objects are composed of atoms moving through impulses, there was no difference between matter and spirit, so the transmutation of bread into flesh and wine into blood in the Catholic Eucharist was, in his eyes, a sham. Since Bruno did not hesitate to engage in heated discussions with his fellow monks on these topics, the inevitable happened, in 1575, he was accused of heresy before the local inquisitor. Having no chance to withstand such a powerful institution, he decided to flee from Naples. From that moment on, Bruno became a fugitive who moved from city to city, with the Inquisition on his heels. Over the next four years, he passed through Rome, Genoa, Turin, Venice, Padua, and Milan. Life as a wanderer was not easy, travels were difficult, rooms for a poor man were dirty and infested with rats, the killing of travelers was frequent, and diseases and epidemics were a threat, in addition to his persecutors. During his travels, Bruno met thinkers, philosophers, and poets who were attracted by his ideas and who became his true friends and helped him publish his works. After a period in Geneva, Lyon, and Toulouse, he arrived in Paris in 1581. His fame preceded him and he was soon accepted by influential groups. King Henry III himself was attracted by his dissertations and, although he could not openly support his heretical ideas, sent him a letter of recommendation to move to England. In London, Bruno stayed at the house of the French ambassador and was presented to Queen Elizabeth. After nearly three years spent in England, he resumed his itinerant life, traveling to Paris, Wittenberg, Prague, Helmstedt, Frankfurt, and Zurich. While in Frankfurt, Bruno received a letter from a Venetian nobleman, Giovanni Moschnigo, who expressed great interest in his work and invited him to Venice to serve as his tutor in exchange for great rewards. Friends warned Bruno of the risks of returning to Italy, but the philosopher accepted the offer and moved to Venice at the end of 1591. There, he participated in sessions at the Accademia degli Uranini, where occultists, scholars, and famous liberal intellectuals met, and he taught at the University of Padua. In May 1592, the philosopher decided to return to Frankfurt to oversee the printing of his works. Moschnigo insisted he stay and, after a long discussion, Bruno agreed to postpone his trip until the next day. These were his last moments of freedom. On the morning of May 23rd, Moschnigo entered Bruno's room with several gondoliers, who pulled the philosopher out of bed and locked him in a dark cellar. The next day, a captain arrived with a group of soldiers and an order from the Venetian Inquisition to arrest Bruno and confiscate all his belongings and books. Three days later, the trial began. 
The first to speak was the accuser, Moshinigo, who had been working for the Inquisition for several years. After declaring that he had indeed staged everything against Bruno, he presented a long list of heretical ideas he had heard from the accused, many distorted and some invented by himself. Among other things, he said that the accused had mocked priests, who were asses, and that Christ had used magic. When interrogated, Bruno explained that his works were philosophical and that in them he only maintained that thinking should be free to investigate as long as it does not challenge divine authority. Bruno believed he could convince the court in Venice, a liberal and commercial city where the Inquisition did not act as harshly as in Rome. But in February 1593, he was handed over to the Roman Inquisition. If until then there might have been a chance to escape the stake, now it had simply vanished. A preordained sentence. Giordano Bruno spent seven years in the Inquisition's prison in Rome, near the Vatican Palace. Its dungeons were infamous and feared. Prisoners were held in dark, damp cells, from which the screams of the tortured could be heard and where the stench of sewage was unbearable. When he appeared before the tribunal in January 1599, he was a weak and emaciated man, but had not lost his determination at all, he refused to recant, and the inquisitors gave him 40 days to reflect. These turned into another nine months of imprisonment. On December 21, 1599, Bruno was again summoned before the Inquisition, but remained firm in his refusal to recant. On February 4, 1600, the sentence was read. Giordano Bruno was declared a heretic, his books to be burned in Street Peter's Square and included in the Index Librorum Prohibitorum, the list of books banned by the Church. At the same time, the Inquisition transferred the accused to the secular court in Rome to punish the crime of heresy without shedding blood. This meant he was to be burned alive. After hearing the sentence, Bruno said, The fear that you feel in imposing this sentence on me is perhaps greater than the fear I feel in accepting it. On the morning of February 17th, Bruno was taken to the place of execution, Campo de Fiori. Prisoners were carried on a mule, as many could no longer stand because of the torture, some were executed beforehand to spare them the suffering of the flames, but Bruno was not granted this privilege. To prevent him from speaking to the spectators, his tongue was paralyzed with a strip of leather. When he was already tied to the stake, a monk bent down and showed him a crucifix, but Bruno turned his head. After the flames consumed his body, his ashes were thrown into the Tiber.